I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh well. What's have happened? They got time. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Introduction to MicroPython. So, who am I? This is a proof that I'm a Python programmer. So, yes. Um, my name is Sui Ming. I wrote software. I, I'm mostly a software developer. I have 10 years industry experience. A little bit more before that. A little more before that. I don't have proof of this, but I use Python since 98. This 1.6, I was 14. I do not know why. I just want to be a hacker. Fun story. There used to be a recommendation that to be a hacker, you, you need to learn Python. Yeah, I don't remember where it is. Of course, there's no proof of that. Thank you. Thank you for not existing. Woo. All right, I'm the one organizer of PyCon. So, meaning, I thank you for coming, I suppose. I hope you guys have fun. Are you? Okay, cool. Tough, tough crowd. All right, I'm also involved in a non-profit Cosina project. So what we do is we're actually a transparency organization that happens to use technology to fight for your right. So talk to me if you want to fight for democracy. I have two dogs. Uh, that's the only time I call them bitches. My dog, female, yeah, cute. Long story. Also, uh, I. I'm currently wearing my software developer slash enthusiast hat, but I work for uh, Jewel Payment Tech. So if you're interested in fight fraud, make payments safer and all that, talk to me. We're hiring, we need slick, I mean interns. <laughs> but, and also we are welcoming all senior developers. We welcome your experience to enhance our team. Uh, yeah, join us. So, what are we talking about? Micro Python, essentially small snake. Uh, longer answer. So it's actually an implementation of Python from embedded devices. What does this mean? Uh, you're talking about devices less than few megabytes of memories, uh, few hundred, very slow, usually one process at a time. And yeah, it, uh, the cool thing about Micro Python, it runs on very hardware. I give you a list later. It develops a daemon job. And I'm a fan, mostly I'm not a developer, but uh, I don't want to brag, but I'm proud kick backer of the Kickstarter to develop uh, the ES2 8266 port of the MicroPython. And every single one of us decided that we should release the source code to public. So uh, on the Kickstarter, uh, Damien was saying that if we pass certain goals, source code are released, and they asked for our opinion. I'm proud to say that we are one of those that say source code will be released to everyone to be used. Yes. Tough crowd, you guys. Come on. So it's a response. All right. So, oh, I forget about hardware. Oh, well. Did I miss this? Oh, yeah. Let's skip this for a while. Uh, how it is different from Python? It's based on Python 3.3, 3, so it's a bit old. So you do not get things like F-string and all that you do not get the full set of standard library, meaning your cryptography and all that are not implemented, your match library are not implemented, your CSV are not implemented, and a whole lot of stuff. And the library actually depends on the hardware. So for example, um, am I talking too fast? Okay, cool, no response. All right, uh, it depends on hardware, one. Uh, open MV cam that have camera module, they have machine learning modules, they have image processing module and whatnot. ESP8266 have Wi-Fi modules. Uh, PyBot have onboard sensors. They have their own modules. So the library is actually is very hardware dependent. So there's, it's hard to say what is a standard library in MicroPython. Uh, unlike uh, CPython, where you get a whole set of features across all hardware and across all operating system. So where is running now? Uh, the earliest implementation of PyBot is MicroPython runs on PyBot. And one of the biggest deployments is actually the ESP266. Don't worry about photos, I will upload it later. Uh, and of course, one another popular one is the OpenMV Cam. OpenMV Cam is a camera 
uh, runs on a STM microcontroller designed for image processing and some neural network that can be robot out of it. And currently, one, another hot one is actually BBC Microbit. Have you heard of it? So BB Microbit is a project to introduce computing education to students through a durable device. So it supports several types of language, uh, Scratch, JavaScript, and Python. And it's actually funded partially with the Python Software Foundation. So yeah, uh, MicroPython is pretty cool because what happened is it got some of the widest hardware support. Even though the support is varies between different hardware. It's not a popular one. I'm so sorry. I don't have enough sleep, so yeah. So here's uh, uh because there's so many hardware, I can't give you any example uh, a comprehensive example of what MicroPython can do. I only focus on one thing. Uh, this is a device called the M5 stack. I have it in my bag somewhere. Uh, after a meeting, talk to me. It's based on ESP32. We use a thing called R shell. R shell is the remote shell to use for MicroPython. Uh, it used to be a popular tool called MPy, very easy to use. I do not recommend it anymore. Uh, the reason is uh, it is not supported as the original creator are focusing on another way to connect to their own devices. I will explain now. Uh, the reason is the M5 actually takes a lot of power from the USB. Uh, the Mac will actually block it without a power hub. I don't have a power hub with me. I don't think so. So I will show my example on my Linux box. And there is some proprietary web-based IDE thing. I won't show that. The goal of the day is to give you a few of the standard way to work on MicroPython using some standard tools. So who's ready? Say hey. Hey. Awesome. So the first thing I will show you is the environment. As long as this thing open. Oh my goodness, how do I open this? Okay. Okay, uh to save time I actually try to okay, here you go. So what I'm doing here is first uh this is actually a Python based library. So always use a virtual environment. Right? I try to skip. So skip, blah, blah, then you install, and it will fail. Spoiler, it failed. Uh, the reason is this. Uh, R shell requires Python 3.4 and above. So make sure you get yourself a Python 3 environment. So like the current command right now, a Python 3. Uh, if you're on Mac, get your brew install Python 3. On Linux, uh, set up your Python 3 environment. A bit more complicated, but First thing is I'll get the Python tree working and then pick install R shell. And it's done. Any question before we go on? How do I turn this on? Uh, escape. Sorry. Alright. So what the why you need the shell? Uh, give me more opening. Ba 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 ba. Set down our shell. M five step with our shell. Is this one? Is it this one? Yep. Have this start right up. Okay, so here's what the shell does. Oh, by the way, uh, the one on the top corner, that's actually the M five step devices. Uh, I just put it there because I have nothing. Uh, we'll show the things later. So you can use help and whatnot. This helps you how to navigate the device. Then you can also use it. Uh, this is how you connect the device. On Mac is different. On Linux, you always use a TTY device to for your serial. So I think I need to turn on device or something. Give me a moment. Yep, I need to turn on device. I forgot about that. So it will uh, actually turn on a shell right now. So notice that it used January 1, uh, 1970 because the internal time is actually based on Unix time, time zero. So then you escape using this. Uh, so to start, you got a shell. So, ta -da. so one of the cool thing about MicroPython is that you get a Python shell uh, for you to prototype, right? 
So, question. No. How much do you Ah, 300 ringgit. Just ringgit. Not expensive, not too cheap. It's fun, so it's worth it. So, uh, I'm going to show you guys how you can do with the shell. So, we add, the shell had multiple functions. One of it is they provide you access to the Python shell on the device. Second, it gives you access to the file system. Uh, MicroPython is a very implementation. Uh, this one actually had a big enough onboard memory. Uh, the ROM, yeah, onboard memory uh, that it will get a file system for you to put your asset and all that. And why you get asset, that comes much later. Actually, I can show it right now. Uh, you know the photo above? Uh, those are actually images, photo and all that. So you, uh, those are assets to be used. So what I'm showing here right now is actually uh, several operating system. One is the LS. LS will list the, uh, the content of the directory. Cat is to open a file. Uh, if there's error, they will give an error. I didn't intend to do that, but you know, you need to show errors to make things right. So as you see, uh, we actually get the cat and one command you to navigate your file system uh, any question oh yeah so another function you have is of course the repo you can call repo directly this will jump directly to the repo who know who don't know what is a repo cool everybody knows stuff man you guys are knowledgeable nice I'm sorry, I don't have enough sleep, so I need to talk a lot to give me a break. All right, so let's talk about the language. So as I say, uh, MicroPython is actually a subset of Python. Uh, not actually sure that implements the specification of Python 3.3. So Python has their own language specification. So this only implement up to 3.3. As a result, your print require a function. Your print is a function. Uh, this is a uh, underneath it is the Python you're actually familiar with. So you get a list, dictionary, all your data structure are there. But there's a catch. Uh, the catch here is uh, your classes cannot be too deep. Remember, you are talking about a microcontroller devices, meaning these are weak machines. It's cool machines, but they're weak. So treat them well, they're cute. Don't kill them, don't burn them. And also get loops and stuff. So your, as I say, you do get all your language and all that. Uh, but as a micro uh, small scale devices, uh, don't make your class structure too deep. Uh, it's not shown here. Uh, the point of this is to show you that uh, most of the libraries uh, actually exist. So most of the function exists. You can use it like a Python function. Uh, what I'm not showing you here is uh, how you do the classes, uh, why you should not do deep classes. Uh, but on the other hand, the documentation on micropythonwebs.org uh, uh, actually explains to you why much better than I am. To save time, I try to skip ahead. You also get true and false if and else. You know, just to prove a point. Print, da da da. Yep. I think that's it. And now you know the preference of my video. All right. Next step. Environment done. Libraries. Eh, language. Okay, libraries. So as I say, uh, each of the MicroPython function actually have, is very hardware dependent. But generally, you get uh, it's very hardware dependent. So for example, the hardware that I use, we get Wi-Fi. They get DHT. DHT is, the, uh, DHT is the temperature and humidity sensor. Uh, you get, but all, uh, one thing that's not clear here is all devices will get standard I.O. So you get serial, S2C, uh, SPI. Uh, no pixel, I'm not so sure about. I read in the documentation that everyone gets it. I cannot be very sure about that. So it just makes, means that uh, no pixel, for those that do not know, it actually means it's a strip long strip of LED, RGB LED, which you can program so they can make patterns out of it. Uh, documentation says, from all documentation says it's supported, I cannot be very sure about that. 
So yeah, it's very hardware dependent. And the M5 stack on top of the ESP32, also a button SD card LCD ATC. So why I want to show this because uh, ESP68, the device have only certain set. M5, the M5 state device that I have, uh, that is to have that and extra stuff. So, and that's the point of it. Question? Bot ready? If you don't bot, say hi. hi. Cool. I'm sorry, I'm going to annoy you guys until you respond to me. Yes. Yeah. Short answer is yes. The long answer is it's toward the end of the slide. Cool. So okay, now I'm going to show you guys how does uh, how the library work. Uh, some of the standard library that's available. I hope I uh, do. I give the right file. Oh yeah. So the point of this exercise is I'm showing what there is in the directory. I don't think it's important now. So let me skip ahead. Just so you know, I didn't plan this through. I'm so sorry. Okay, so I'm now in the rep hole. So the first thing I'm going to show here is import UJSON. So some of the difference between uh, some of the difference between different libraries is you get U for micro, right? Uh, it's a small library. So in this case, you get JSON as part of the standard library. I believe all micro Python have that. So the behavior is not too different than uh, than how your JSON library works. So in a way, uh, you do not get the full package in your standard library. You do get something, and you even get syntax error. So in this case, uh, because a JSON requires double code and all that, so it should follow standards. So yeah, it's an accident, but I'm making it here. So uh, you also have the OS module. Again, OS module doesn't have everything. Uh, in this case, you still get things like list dir, list all the directory and all that. Uh, this is a version of the micro uh, micro Python that actually have enough space for the whole directory, so you can use OS dir or not. Uh, this is not meant to be a comprehensive view, just to show that what uh, just give you a few what are the important library that you have. Um, to go ahead a bit further. Oh, you also get time library. Uh, the time library here is very cool for a few reasons. One, you also get the standard sleep, but here's number two. Your microcontroller can actually sleep less than a second. Uh, they can sleep, uh, they can go deep sleep. You can sleep like less than a millisecond. So you like millisecond, microsecond. A microcontroller devices can go so detailed. So it actually helps you to actually like control the type of sleep that you have. Uh, it's actually very cool. And this is actually a trick how you can save power. So, any question about standard library? Okay, uh, if I start, just read the documentation. Yeah, cool. Uh, hmm. What else do I have? Standard library done, sensor demo. Okay, so uh, here's catch number one. Not all devices have built-in sensors. Uh, the M5 set that I have uh, have built-in accelerometer gyro on one chip. It's actually very cool. And also, when I talk sensor, uh, note that I will not talk about your thermometer because everybody do it. I got bored. Even I got bored. And number two, I will not blink an LED because everybody with IoT will blink an LED and it is boring. So yes. But I'm going to go through uh, what we call I2C. Here's why. Uh, when you do your microcontroller devices, we are talking to sensors, learn your two things, your three sensors, serial, I squared C, SPI. Here's why. All the interesting sensors are talking in this protocol. So uh, in this case, uh, the accelerometer, gyroscope, and, and on the same chip, they use an I squared C connector. So learn it, use it. In this case, what also cool for these guys is, uh, it have a built-in library for uh, this accelerometer. Uh, so as I say, this is very similar to how you actually do a Python call function or whatnot, and you can experiment on the shell. Awesome source. 
Good thing is awesome. Awesome. <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, I think I skipped for a while. Okay, so as you see, if it, uh, this is where things get really interesting. You see the, the number change on the bottom? Of course, don't do it like me. Come on. For loop exists for a reason. Right? For loop exists for a reason. So the point of this exercise is uh, the basic hardware is there. Learn your I2C, SPI and whatnot. Learn your protocol. And there's something very important at the end of it. I don't remember why I do this. Oh yeah, uh, you need to sleep so that you can read the sensor in the correct way so that you don't, you know, just, just so it makes sense. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry, sir. Okay, all right, let's move on. Any question about protocol and all that? Man, tough crowd, though, you guys. All right, let's move on. Yes. Did I? Did I? Oh, okay, wrong tab. Oops. All right, uh, short answer is, uh, Provider tend to release documentation for you to use. Uh, always start. And uh, if you do a hardware project, start with documentation. You will fry your hardware if you don't read it. So uh, each of the implementation of MicroPython, we have a we have documentation that say how it work, what is implemented, and what not. Uh, in this case, uh, I know for sure the M5 stack have it on the GitHub page, uh, and the form is pretty good. I will start with that first. Any other question? No? Cool. And this is something I forget to open. Give a moment. So, as I say, uh, the ESP series of the microcontroller con uh, contain networking function. Meaning, in this case, uh, you get uh, Wi Fi. How much time do I have? Okay, nobody complains, so I suppose I just continue. Uh, okay, so remember that remember that uh, I show you guys how to use the JSON function and how to open file. I may forget to show you how to open file, but let's start with this. Uh, so uh, the whole point of this step is to how to initialize a Wi-Fi. Uh, actually, there's not much other than the fact that there's Wi-Fi, you get address and all that. I'm gonna do it on the shell. Read your configuration. I think this. Oh, I might upload the wrong video. Did I? Yeah, I upload the wrong video. Uh, yeah. Uh, you. So here's the best practice. Uh, these devices, some of the uh, mic, uh, ESP two six six devices, allows you to actually save your configuration as JSON. So as a result, you can use it to actually save configuration for your Wi-Fi configuration and whatnot. And this is the secret of how I won't show you my Wi-Fi password at home. So I store it in a JSON file. So yeah, and this is how you connect a Wi-Fi. That's about it. I'm so sorry it is what it is. And this is what uh, the M5 stack demo. Uh, remember that I say that the M5 stack have their own set of library. Uh, and I really mean they have a whole comprehensive set of library. So uh, I may skip along just in case people complain. Uh, so you implement this. Uh, you have the LCD function to clear your thing. You have the print function to print text. Uh, the reason why I like the M5 set device is, as a beginner micropython devices is that they have the screen button and all that. It's a bit expensive, but uh, you get it, then you default get the screen for you to experiment immediately. Uh, so my problem with uh, a lot of embedded devices is how do you print things? The short answer is you use serial. Uh, the long answer is you have this to actually help you. Uh, so you have, once you have a screen, debugging is a lot similar to what you guys done, print. Uh, especially true for micropathing devices when 
uh, we do not have access to breakpoints, you do not have access to debuggers and whatnot. So you you really have to rely on this. Did I lose something? I'm gonna skip for a while. Oh, uh, there's an error. Uh, another thing that uh, the M5 step provide is actually some of the UI function. So in this case, this is an LCD function to generate circle, UI element, and whatnot. Right. Uh, okay, uh, final thing, exception exists in MicroPython, just so you know. So this is about drawing circle, and this is actually a function, how do you use the but on board button. Uh, they provide a library for that. So how they handle a button is by event. So you had a callback, then you register an event handler. So in this case, I do, oh, I might see just now. So I'm going to skip a bit later again. So this is button B. Uh, button C exists for other reasons, so I leave button C alone. So this one I said, uh, I don't remember the color, uh, because there is a constant and you don't get auto, uh, auto. So, so you clear the screen now. Yep. What did I do? Oh, I so this is how I register an event on the shell. And now I press the button. You can't see it, but there's actually a red color and cyan. So yeah, I blame bad webcam. Oh, <laughs> I don't like PewDiePie, for goodness sake. I don't even like that guy. I'm so sorry. It's a sign. Yes. Okay, uh, so there's a whole point of this data exercise. Uh, me and engineers of my team actually built a pollution sensor, a PM 2.5 sensor. Uh, so, uh, just watch the video. I have it with me. Chi Liang helped uh, help me set up the dashboard and InfluxDB. Uh, we talked directly using HTTP protocol. So that's the. This is the connector board. This is from Cytron. Uh, that make it easy for us to control the power because the pin out for the PM sensor is actually very weird. So the thing is manageable and output into what we call a growth connector, which is pretty standard. Then I can plug directly to one of the port because they use growth connector. Uh, so this current value and where it submit data to. I need to restart it, but so the whole point of this exercise is what you can do. The short answer is a lot of things, and one of the things that we can need help right now is our heat sensor project. Uh, this is how it works. We use the same device. Oh, this is my robot. Let's not go there because I dismantled it. So, sorry. All right. Rest in peace. So, yeah. Uh, and also, there's a point for me to show this source code uh, because this is as close as we have to how you deploy, how a Production-ish uh, micro Python code would look like. So go to SRC. I hate that. So, uh, okay. So, so you see, I re uh, all the thing that I tell you just now. So this is the library that I use. This is a sensor. You are notice you are uh, the out the sensor output. You are uh, as a serial. That's one. And number two is notice that I write in binary. Uh, the protocol is binary. Uh, you can look at the. You can actually look at the data sheet. And it goes to one of the points I've been telling you guys. Let do not just stop at bling. Do not stop at button. Learn the protocols because the interesting sensor require your knowledge on those protocols. So, uh, and number two, uh, I know this is very uncomfortable for most software developers that got used to high level languages. Learn your binaries. Yep. Learn your binaries because this sensor right in binaries, uh, to understand it, you re require you to parse it, handle it, and all that. Confession time, I steal the source code from somewhere else for the parsing part. <laughs> so, yeah. But it makes sense. I, I at least do my part to try to understand why. Uh, use configuration file, go to configuration, set up the Wi-Fi, then check for it, then submit data and whatnot. Then you can see the template for the configuration file. 
la 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 la. This is just a template because oh. I won't share you my password. Not my phone. That's that may or may not be my Wi-Fi password. <laughs> So uh, in this way, you can use the JSON to actually store your URL endpoint for your HTTP request and whatnot. So here's the point of the whole exercise. One, uh, here's, okay, so one, uh, MicroPython is a capable devices, but it's not production ready. That's the extra thing I'll tell you. Uh, number two, you can actually prototype your code on a shell and whatnot. Number three, certain devices actually give you a lot of capability for you to do things. And you can, it's possible uh, by learning your networking, your binary, uh, your protocols, and your connection activity, you can actually get started with your IoT project. I hate to call it IoT project because it's sensor connected to internet and IoT just so bloated. <laughs> so I just stick with internet connected sensor. And yeah, so what else I'm trying to say? Oh yeah, actually there's something else. Uh, so what's the catch? Here's one. Uh, it's not as stable as the Arduino, uh, and I have some. Uh, Arduino is very well better tested, so it's not as as a result you need it's a bit more experimental. Higher level uh, language tend to use more resources. Uh, this is the law of the land, so which is why it takes a while for Python to actually grow. And ESP32 had on board Bluetooth support, but the Bluetooth support for MicroPython is not even there yet. Whereas the Arduino have it already, so this is a catch. You won't get the you won't get the full C, uh, C library with your documentation, and the behavior can be very different. And finally, you want to get started. M5 stack is one of those things you use. That's 300 ringgit. Uh, look at M5 stack. Uh, the ESP266 is awesome because it's just a chip. You can build it for RM50 ringgit. That's around 10 US dollar. Pretty good. Pretty good deal. And nowadays, uh, it, uh, Microbit is awesome because it has all the curriculum for your kids. So from Python and all that. So what next? Well, have fun. I hope. Since we've got time, you can see my devices. Thank you.